Hey guys and welcome back. Today we are going to do more work on the Super 7 that I am building in the background here. What we are going to focus on today is the floor for the Super 7. We are also going to build a battery mount for the first SFRO. Uh, we need that done. And I'm also going to show you just quickly the brake pedal, how that was done. As you can see, I have done plenty of work here and some of that will be shown in this video today. The floor, as you see here, is done by one millimeter normal steel sheet. And you may ask, why didn't you go for one millimeter or two millimeter aluminium instead? The reason for this is because I had the steel plate at home and I didn't want to rivet everything in place afterwards. So I actually went with this and welded it. But afterwards, I... As you can see here, I did the weld on the inside here to keep it nice and tidy. And afterwards, of course, I reminded myself that I should have drilled holes into the sheet itself and spot welded on the underside. That would have looked a lot more nicer. But at the same way, at the same time, I will have aluminium sheet here for the feet that we'll be standing on. So that's not a big deal. So let's get going and we'll start getting the battery box into place and then we'll go for the sheet metal in the floor. We need to mount the battery. Here you can see the finished contraption. So let's go ahead and let me show you how, I, how it actually looks building it. I start with the bottom plate and a quick measurement to make sure that the battery will fit as I want and it looks good. Making a template out of cardboard is really recommended. Especially when you don't have straight corners or specific angles to work with like in this case here. Marking out from the cardboard on a piece of steel and then cutting it with the angle grinder. If all done correctly it fits perfectly and it does. Marking out the location of the battery and getting some pieces of angle iron bending it into shape and a test fit to make sure that it fits as I want marking out the cutting location and cutting the part bottom part off making sure that it's straight and then another test fit Grinding off all excess paint, making sure it's ready for actually be painted later on. Marking out the second piece, bending it into shape. And a quick test fit before cutting it off. Spot welding it into place. The MIG welder makes a quick work out of spot welding. And then I can go back with a TIG weld later on if needed. Cleaning it up a little bit. And a quick test fit so the battery actually fits. It is, though, very, very tight. Tacking it into the frame. And at this stage, I realize I have made a mistake. As you can see, the battery protrudes into the bay where the gearbox will sit. But, of course, 
A quick test fit is needed, so let's bring the engine into the space again. Getting the motor mount into place. A little bit tricky, but it's doable. And of course my kid is helping me. As you can see now, I'm having a great hard time to get the motor or to get the battery in place. It's basically not possible without bending the mount and that's not the way to go. Now you can see me attach the battery again while not having the front bracelet into place and that's because I remade it. You can see it here, it have a little bit of a hitch and you slide it in like that instead. And that makes the mount finished actually, because this works really good and it's basically the same type of mount that you have on many cars today. And the mount of course needs to be fully welded afterwards, so it is a little bit sturdier than it is now. So if we look at the battery mount itself, you can see that the bottom there has the hook and it goes up and it's screwed in place like that. And I think this mount is actually working really good. And on the back side there, there will be a plate that protects, I mean here will be a plate and that plate is towards the feet itself. And I think it, I mean you, you can mount the battery in the back of the car, but um, this battery is so small, so it's not really a weight gain. And instead I will be able to use very short wires, especially to start the motor, because that one sits 20 centimeters away and I think that's really really neat. The protection for the output is actually in here so we can use those original ones and they will be fine for that. So I have also done a couple of modifications to the braking system. I added this plate underneath because I realized I only had M6 bolts here holding it together. And that was on the top of the brake here. Uh, that's plenty in terms of pressing because it was press fit into this box section here. I also added a piece down there and an angle up here. And those are to be sealing the area off. So it's a little bit easier to actually get this area together. So I will be welding this up a little bit quick now. And then I consider the, the pedals to be done as well, and I will show you how it looks when disassembled. Here we now have the pedals in place. As you can see here, we have the M6 bolts in the top here, and the plate underneath here. This is also supported by the, the flooring sheeting that is done, and it's solidly welded here. This will never ever budge anywhere, so that will not be a problem. It will be covered out by the sheet going up here, protecting the actual steering as well. Uh, that's the next place and we need to do some piping for the brake fluids here. The brake fluids itself will be sitting either on the inside here or up here somewhere. We'll see about that. So let's start with the sheeting. As I said earlier, I went with normal steel sheet and that's because I had it laying around and it's simple to get in place. I started by marking on the top and realized it's really dirty so I had to clean it up somewhat. With that said, it's a lot easier to mark on the underside on the inside and I'm doing that right now. Flipping it over and drawing the lines between the different places. And when all that's done, there is a lot of angle grinding to do. Preferably I would like to have cut this in a bigger machine or with plasma cutter, but the angle grinder actually did a quite nice and quick job of it. Just make sure that you have adequate safety gear on you like glasses and ear protection. 
cleaning up all the ends and test fitting. Some minor adjustments and then it should be able to fit straight into where it should be. Second plate is being cut in place as well. As you can see it's quite a tedious task and I have to do this multiple times. Slow cutting is actually the thing that saves the disc the best. Because if you cut too fast in a 90 degree angle you will destroy the cutting discs really really quickly. When done I'm cleaning all the surfaces up because I am going to TIG weld some parts. And I'm just using a normal sanding disc for this one that is worn out. I have also cleaned up the sheet metal with some um, ethanol or some, some removal tools. And here you can see me spot weld the bottom of it. Making sure it's actually sitting flush to the frame. There are a lot of spot welds here. When that's done, I'm going over it again, making sure it sits tight. And the next part is actually to go back and uh, weld the welds a little bit longer. And no, my kid is not running here right now. TIG welding the parts. This takes time. Long, nice wells. It's now time to t turn this all around. And currently I can still lift this, so it's not really a big problem. But it's getting heavier for everything that is attached. It's time to weld the inside now. That's why I'm doing this. And I do have a piece of wood or I think it was some kind of block underneath to make sure that the steel sheet actually sits tight against the frame. And here you can see me actually move that block. So as soon as I choose a new new location to actually weld, I move the block aside. And this is something that I should have welded from underneath instead. The knock. That means it's done. Just cleaning up the welds in the middle. Uh, the ones around the frame I'm not allowed to touch. So as you can see, the bottom part is pretty much done. I'm not going to weld all the way around. There's no use doing that. I'm going to seal it up uh, from the inside with the wax instead and I will show you that in a later stage. And this is the inside itself from another view.
and it looks pretty decent. So that was the video for this week. In the next week's video, we will do a lot more work. We will, I will show you how I rebuild and fix the actual brake system for the front wheels. And depending on time, you might even see me rebuild the rear end, the brakes and the rear axle itself mounted into place. I also did some work with bump steer. So let me try to get that into the video and show you how I work with the bump steer and fix that issue. So guys, if you haven't subscribed already, I really think that you should do it right now. If you want to see more of this project, subscribe, hit the bell notification button. And if you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to add them down below in the comment section. So once again, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.